So the tools that you need are all laid out here. This is going to be everything that we're going to be using for this project. The first one is, of course, the garage door opener itself. I like this one because when you press a button, the LED lights up and so you have feedback as to when you're actually pressing buttons and when you've connected circuits and all that. It comes with a set of instructions as well, which I'll flash onto the screen to show you about how you can pair this to your own garage um, as well. In order to open said garage door opener, you're going to need some sort of flathead screwdriver. Um, it doesn't need didn't necessarily be a flathead. You can get a butter knife. You can get all these kind of flat things as a substitute. Uh, of course, you're going to need your generic buttons. You can get different types. I'll link a couple for AliExpress on where you can get these. It's great if they come with a harness too, because then you don't have to wire your own uh, harnesses together. There you go. You can see that there's a harness and there's the actual button itself and I can connect the harness together and it becomes one single piece. I have two buttons here because I'm going to be hooking up one button to each of these two buttons over here on the garage door opener. Next up we also have a voltmeter here. This is going to be helpful for checking continuity and making sure that we're actually connecting up a circuit in the garage door opener. I'll show you how to do that when we get there. You're also going to need a soldering station or soldering station however you want to say it as well as an extractor fan uh, just to keep yourself safe I mean you don't necessarily need this but I don't know if you want to be breathing in lead itself I have the leaded solder or solder however you want to say it and of course you're going to need your wire stripper slash wire cutters as well now the rest of the tools over here are all kind of optional I have a set of tweezers just to check uh, the connections which I'll show you once we get there I also have a set of heat shrink. Uh, this is just to wrap any exposed wires. You could use electrical tape too. I don't have my electric tape on me, so I might as well make use of that. I don't think we're gonna be needing any dielectric grease, but I'm gonna have some exposed electrical points once we open up the garage door opener. So I kinda wanna keep those safe. So I'll probably put some electrical grease on it. Um, you can also get a uh, solder extractor. I don't think we're gonna be needing this in this project, but it's here just in case I do make any mistakes. And lastly, uh, I'll be using a set of helping hands. You don't need this either. If you have a second person, your second person could be a set of helping hands, but this is always great to just keep wires in place so they're not moving around while you're doing any soldering. So with that, I'll link all of these items in the description. You can look at it at your own leisure and see what you need and what you don't need, uh, but let's get right into it. All right, to start off, we're going to open up the garage door opener itself. Now, this one's pretty easy. You can see that there's kind of slots or there's like a space in the center here. Um, and there you can put in your butter knife. You can put in your flathead screwdriver, whatever. So I'm just going to take my flathead and twist. So it doesn't matter counterclockwise or clockwise. This might be more difficult for you if uh, you've never opened the garage door opener. You can also just uh, push it open with some leverage. And that's a go. I've got one side. Let me try the other over here. And there you go. I've opened up the garage door opener. Now you can see it's a pretty simple assembly. There is button number one, button number two, button number three. And if you ever want to disconnect the power at any point in time, you can just slide out this battery here. Now. Uh, I'm not going to take out the battery, you can slide it out that way, but I'm just going to leave it in here. Now that we have the, um, the whole panel exposed, what we're going to do here, I could zoom in a little, is we're actually going to check the connections to make sure that we're soldering to the correct areas when we do that. So the first thing we're going to actually do is make sure we know where we're going to be soldering things because we don't know if we want to solder here to there, here to there, or side to side. So with my set of metal tweezers here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to touch two points and see if they make any uh, red light pop up. And that's the great thing about this garage door opener is you know exactly when you've done something correctly. Okay, so when I've touched those two points here, nothing happens. So what we're instead going to do is try side to side like this. And there you go. You see the red light popped up. So if I did that on the other side, I would assume, yeah, there you go. 
So what that means is when we do one wire, we're going to solder it to this top point and the other wire, we're going to solder it to the bottom point there. And that way we know that we're making a good connection. So when we press our button that uh, we're getting that red light popping up and that we're doing everything correctly. But we're going to put this to a side for now and we're going to open up the generic button here. The uh, wiring harness is pretty simple. I mean, there's only one way you can really plug this in. If I show you like that and I show you like that, it's uh, pretty obvious how you're supposed to plug this in. So I'm just going to throw it in like that makes a nice click. Uh, and the next thing you want to do is you can kind of see your, your wires aren't exposed here and you definitely want to expose those so you can get to the metal kind of like I have on my other button over here. So this is where you take your wire stripper and just start stripping the wires. Now I'm going to do this off screen uh, and then we're going to start working with the one that we have over here. All right, next I'm going to get out my voltmeter. You can see here it's a, a set of alligator clips. So these are better at grabbing onto small wires. So I've, I'll link these as well. I'm sure you can get them on eBay, AliExpress, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but once we pop them in, we're going to set it. We're going to set our voltmeter to continuity. And from there, I'm going to grab my button with the the stripped wire and i'm gonna pull you in a little closer there we go uh, and we're just gonna connect up the red side to the red wire you can see sorry we're gonna connect the red side to the red wire and there it is it's put in place uh and then we're just gonna go through and start testing which e with each of the colored wires here the yellow Press that down and then press the button, nothing. And what you're going to see here on the green, which I've already done off screen, is now the red is connected and the green is connected. So when I press the button, you see I get continuity. If I put the, the green on the red and the black on the red and then I press the button again, you see I also get continuity. So this is how you can tell which wires you should be soldering up to your garage door opener. If you remember, we said we're gonna connect from top to bottom and top to bottom over here. So for one button, this one will connect a red and a green. And the next one will also connect a red and a green. And this is how you can check for continuity. All right, before we start soldering here, the first thing I'm gonna do is get a piece of heat shrink now, if you don't have heat shrink and you can use electrical tape, you can probably uh, avoid this step. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it into four pieces. Um, I, I would use this green one for the green wires, but it's a little too large for my liking. So I'm just going to stick with four pieces of heat shrink. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-sleeve those. If I bring you guys in closer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the heat shrink and just pre-sleeve it onto here and this way after i've soldered the wire um i can then bring the heat shrink close and then shrink it up right at the end so it covers all the um exposed electrical points then i could put some dielectric grease on top of it or something like that but for now this is a preparation step so i know some of you are going to hate me doing this on a green wire but i'm going to put the red one over the green wire because it is very small and i i don't think the green heat shrink would uh shrink enough on this so there we go and then of course i'm going to do this on the other one as well and now that we've heat shrinked or um sleeve the the heat shrink onto the wires we can now go on to soldering you're gonna have to forgive me for this section because i have not soldered in years so i'm still very much going through this process all over again uh, Let's see, we'll first turn on soldering iron. I know I had it set to a specific temperature, 730. I believe that's Fahrenheit. There's no way that's Celsius. So I'm going to let that heat up, and that's what I'm going to consider as the temperature for soldering, because that's what I used in mechanical keyboards. Now, once I turn this extractor fan on, for the sake of my safety, I don't know if you can see that over here, um, that should extract out any soldering fuel, so that way I'm not breathing it in. 
Best to do this in a open environment where all your doors are open and your windows are open. All right, so that was quite the difficult process for someone who hasn't done this in a while, but um, I've been able to get all the connections down and I'll show you in a second the buttons work too. The last step I'm doing here is I'm just getting the heat shrink uh, you can see all the red points there and I'm just putting them as close to the connections as possible And then I'm just gonna heat them up now You could use a lighter you could use your hairdryer too, but I'm gonna use a heat gun because that's what I'm so used to All right, so here's the finished product here um, Not the greatest soldering job in the world definitely learn from someone else if this is your first time soldering This is how it's ended up so If I bring that in closer to you uh, you can see the soldering is, uh, you yeah, know, it's all right. It's good for what it is. I've put the heat shrink there and everything. And now you can see when I test with the buttons. Oh, let me bring it into frame. Uh, if I test with this button, the LED comes up. Test with this button, the LED comes up. Now, all I got to do is program this with the garage. And then we're good to go to install it into the car. I'll flash the instructions on the screen, but you can program it via the instructions that are given to you. You can see here when I press the button, the garage door opens and closes. Your next step is to get into your car and find your space where you're going to install the button. Here you can see a selection of blank switches. So those two switches on the right, I'm going to take out those blank switches and put my own switches in for the garage door open. This process will be different for you, but for me, it's as simple as taking these trim tools and pulling out this one access panel on the side here. Now, after I've taken off this panel, I'm also going to take off the actual uh, button panel too, which you'll see here. And I've already taken out the, the blank switch and put my own switches in place. So now you're going to see I've taken um, the harnesses and I've already wrapped them up with some cloth tape or you can use electrical tape just so they don't rattle around and jiggle around when you install them. I'm also going to take some uh, a command strip although later I changed it to velcro some sort of temporary solution so you can easily take out the garage door opener at will or you can make it a permanent solution if you really want to and super glue it on the inside it's up to you but I'm going to take this um, command strip and just place it on the side panel here and that way I have easy access to the battery, to the panel, everything in case I need to service it in the future. Next, and I'm sorry for the camera angle here, I'm going to go through and feed the harnesses and connect them up to the switches themselves. And here's a shot as well of the switches that you can see everything is hooked up as well as my other aftermarket buttons. And your last step here is to reinstall your panels. Make sure that your wires are pinching and nothing's getting in the way. And after that, test out your buttons and see if they work.